Good morning, competition. It is Wednesday of week 27, and we are starting off with some standard algorithms with decimals. So let's get started here with addition. We are starting with our hundreds place. Three plus zero is three. Four plus zero is four decimal. Two plus one is three. Five plus eight is 13. Here is my three carry my one. One plus four is five. So my answer here is 503 and 43 hundredths. Now let's go to subtraction. If I have seven, I can't lose nine. So I'm going to cross this off. I'm going to make this a zero and I'm going to give 10 to the seven, making it a 17. Now I have 17 minus eight, or excuse me, minus nine. I said the answer, which is eight. Now I have zero, so I can't lose eight. I'm going to cross off this five. I'm going to make it a four. Therefore, this zero gets 10, and I have 10 minus eight is two. Now I have four minus five. Gosh, I can't do that either. So I'm going to borrow from this two. I'm going to make that a one, and this becomes not a four, but a 14. 14 minus five is nine. There's my decimal. Now I can't do this either. Every single part of this is borrowing. We have one minus four, which I cannot do. So I'm gonna borrow from this two, I'm gonna make it a one. This is an 11. 11 minus four is seven. And now one minus zero is one. Whew, that was a lot of borrowing and regrouping. A really good opportunity to see if we're accurately doing that skill combined with or decimal place values. My answer is seven and 928 thousandths. All right, let's take a look at some fractions. So here, boys and girls, I have one third and I'm going to add one half. But right now I don't have them in a form where I can add because I'm looking at holes that are broken up into different quantities, right? So my very first job is to turn these into an equivalent fraction, right? I have to get a common denominator. Okay, I'm gonna look at this three and I'm gonna think to myself, huh, if I doubled three, I would have six, or some of my students have been multiplying their denominators, which in this case, we're gonna to get to the same answer, right? Let's create the same value of one third, but an equivalent fraction that equals something over six. So I'm asking myself this, boys and girls, remember, one third equals what over six? Well, if I take three times two, I get six. So I'm gonna do the same thing to my numerator. One times two equals two. This is just creating equivalent action, right? This part isn't new to us in fifth grade, but tucking it into adding our fractions is a little bit different. So pay special attention to this. Now I have one half, and I'm going to turn that into an equivalent fraction that is something over six. Well, two times three gives me six. So I'm going to do one times three gives me three. And notice, boys and girls, now I have a fraction that I can solve. I have two plus three gives me five, and my denominator stays a six. So I'm going to draw a line. So we can take a look at this below. We have one fourth plus five sixths. Those denominators are not the same. So pause this video and try this out to see if you can figure out what they'll be. All right, my new denominator is 12. Because I know that five six, if I double both the numerator and the denominator, I get 10 over 12, right? If I take one fourth and I multiply it, both the numerator and denominator by three, I get three twelfths. So my answer here is 13 twelfths. All right, just three more questions for us today. Our next question is familiar. We're thinking about modeling. But now we're modeling, thinking about a fraction, okay? So my first question I'm going to ask myself is, how many columns is this divided into? 
Well, it's divided into five columns. So my denominator is five because my denominator is how many parts my whole is broken into. My whole is broken into four, or excuse me, five parts. And how many of those parts have shading? Well, four of my columns have shading out of five. Now I'm going to look at my rows. How many rows do I have? I have four rows. How many of those rows have some shading? Three have shading. So my answer here is three-fourths times four-fifths. Three-fourths times four-fifths is what I have shown in my problem. Now remember, boys and girls, the denominator is how many parts my whole is broken into. If I count all the parts, there are 20 between both the gray and the white. Now my numerator is how many of those parts are gray, and that is exactly 12. That is the answer to this problem. Our second to last problem today is about a rifle tower in appearance is made of three sections. Notice this is my first section, second section, third section. How tall is the rifle tower in total? So we are going to stack these numbers. We are going to attend to the place value and make sure that this place value perfectly aligns. When I perfectly align these place values, now I'm adding my hundreds, for example. So if I add these hundreds, I'm going to have 13, carry my 1. Now if I add these, I'm going to have 12, carry my 1. If I add these, I'm going to have 19, carry my 1. If I add these, I'm going to have 9. If I add these, I'm going to have 9. And if I have these, I'm going to have 2. All right, that is the answer in total. But what is the unit? It's a meter. Lastly, I'm looking at the three equations that I can use to represent the diagrams. Well, the first thing I could do is think about what fraction I see here. Then I could multiply it by two, right? Because I see it two times. Well, how many parts is this tape diagram divided into? It's divided into five. How many of those parts have shading? Three of them do. So I'm looking at three fifths times two. There's one way I could represent this. I could also think about this being one whole divided into five parts. So I can actually write that out. One whole divided into five parts. And then I could remember, and after that's divided into five parts, I captured three of them here, right? And then I did that two times. So I could multiply this by two. There's another expression that I could build. Okay, it tells us to do three. Let's think of one more. Well, each of these individual pieces is one fifth, right? So this is one fifth here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. How many one fifth pieces? Hmm, there's six. There's another expression that we could build. Boys and girls, that finishes off Wednesday.